What is up, YouTube.com? What is up, YouTube.com? It's your boy, Ojama Gear. It's back with another uh, episode of How to Grow Wealth. So welcome, my friends. I'm going to keep cranking these out daily, hopefully. And um, if you're new here, the How to Grow Wealth series, I don't really know how to do it specifically, but I know that the Bible does. I know this is gonna that's going to cause a lot of um, maybe contention, but I am of the belief you do not need to become a Christian to get the value out of Christianity. And the Bible has a lot of wisdom that can promote overall growth, which then promotes overall well-being. Or no, yeah, well-being, but then wealth. Wealth precedes that. Okay. So that being said, let's just hop right into the episode today. I'm going to try my best to not word salad the crap out of everything. And we're going to try to get through the whole chapter of, um, whoops, whole chapter, how to grow wealth, Proverbs, finish chapter one of Proverbs. So here we go. Um, so it goes into the next part, which is the warning against invitation of sinful men. So again, people are going to get hung up on this word sinful, I think. So it's just important that we talk about what I believe sin means, or maybe explain what sin means to somebody who's not in um, the religion. So it's having like one foot in the secular world and one foot in the uh, Christian world, kind of. I mean, like I'm all in on Christianity, but I do hang out in... I always describe myself as like criminally adjacent. It's probably not the best way to describe myself anymore because I don't even do anything remotely criminal. But like I say that in a way that I like have no problem hanging out with people who are considered like undesirables by society and stuff like that. So um, I feel like I'm a, I'm a decent uh, go in between for people who don't really understand or... Uh, the 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 wordage that's used in the Bible there. Um, so again, this is going to be kind of rough. I'm not going to even bother editing this type of stuff to make the jump cuts and make it all pretty and stuff like that because I believe that the value is going to be in this. And however long it takes me to get that out of myself in a way that's like easy to understand, I mean, I'm going to need to say pauses and use filler words like like and um and stuff like that to wait for my brain to compile, whatever. So don't expect any fancy editing out of me. I think that this will still be valuable and worth your time. So you should stick it out to the end. But I understand if you click off because then this just isn't for you because you're not here for entertainment. You're, I mean, you're here for entertainment and I'm not very entertaining, but I do want to, I, I can be, but whatever. Anyway, that being said, so I feel like I'm a good go between. I'm a good interpreter for um, secular, materialistic, let's say normal people, uh, normal American culture. So sin, if you want to think about sin from a materialistic, secular, normal point of view. Um, sin just means incorrect. Um, so if, so sin in the context of mankind is if you build something, let's say you build a car and then the car is supposed to run on like the gasoline you get from the gas station, but you fill it up with, um, sand instead, you're going to brick that engine and kill it. Like, you know, you mix sand in with the, uh, with the gasoline. You're going to brick the engine up and kill it. So then it would be a sin. It'd be sinful. That's what sin means in the con. I think that's the simplest way I can explain it. It just means from the creator's original intention of the device. Okay. So just that, what, what you know what I mean? Like whatever your opinion is there, I can feel the, the pushback from people I've had conversations with this about before, because there's a lot of different, there's a lot of weeds in there, but like just, Forget all that. Try to forget all that. That's not important here. Um, the contentions with Christianity are being heavily debated on YouTube. If you want to, like, it, that this isn't the place that's going to happen. I'm just trying to uh, interpret the the Bible in a way that you can understand whether you agree with it or not. This is just what I, you know what I mean. I'm not going to do you a service by changing what it's trying to say to you. Okay. Anyway, so that's what sinful is. Okay. So like people who are acting against what humans ought to do. Okay, that's a sinful, that's a sinful man. So this is the warning against the invitation of sinful men. Uh, listen, my son, to your father's instruction and do not forsake your mother's teaching. Okay, pretty self-explanatory there. It is telling you, this is a, uh, it's telling you what to do here. They are a garland to grace your head and a chain to adorn your neck. So now what a garland is, is a, it's honor. It's a, it's a, it's an ornament that goes on top of your head. Let me just look this up again, just to make sure. I was just looking this up. Parents should see as treasures and that their wisdom and instructions can pass down future generations. 
a garland or a pendant and says they are graceful wreath for your head and necklaces for your neck. So yes, it is like um, they are a trinket to show honor class. You know what I mean? Like this is a metaphor to describe that. Okay. Hopefully you kind of understand that. So it's saying it's important. It's useful. So your father's instruction and your mother's teaching. Okay. So those are very, very important. That's where like the first um, opportunities for wisdom are going to come from. Are going to be here. Yeah, I keep drawing these in the videos. I just like doing it. So I'm going to keep doing it. Anyway, so then my son, if sinful men entice you, so that means it's sinful. So it's not even, this isn't even making the claim that they're evil yet, but they're men who like have fallen into sin, fallen into incorrect patterns. Okay. So if you just replace that, and it, even if it's not technically correct based on theologians or whatever the apologetic people want to get after me, it is a working definition for the context here. If people who are committing wrong entice you, do not give it to them, okay? Do not give in to them. <laughs> Sorry. Um, if they say, come along with us, let's lie and wait for innocent blood, let's ambush some harmless soul, let's swallow them alive like the grave, and pull like those who go down into the pit, we will get all sorts of valuable things and fill our houses with plunder. Cast lots with us. We will share the loot. Casting lots means um, they'll split the loot. And it's based on chance, whatever. So, you know, I mean, they're, they're leaving it up to chance to split the loot. Um, yeah, so these are, um, this is what how they'll kind of talk to you. Uh, this is kind of one of those things that you have to, like, look for this. So in today's context, nobody's going to say this. I mean, maybe people who are, Honestly, maybe in a certain um, level of society that they'll talk to you bluntly like this, because I'm sure like the gangster, the um, like there's gangsters out there that'll talk to you like this, bro. Let's go. I mean, okay, yeah, I've had that happen to me actually in my past. Um, I remember I was over at a buddy's house smoking weed, and when they were all discussing how they could go rob um, rob some old man because they knew that he had 50k in a safe or something like that. And I said, are you guys stupid? Like, do you, do you, like, are we seriously sitting here having this conversation right now? And I was so like dumbed down for being so high that I like was just so in like awe that they were even considering this and just like openly talking about how they're going to go commit a crime in a very small town where it would very obviously come back to the, like, cause you know, like we lived in a town where you'd smoke weed and people knew about it. So then you were immediately put into the same camp as murderers. You know what I mean? Like, that's the type of, like, it was one of those towns where nothing ever happened. So being smoking weed or drinking under age was looked at as atrocious to humanity as, like, being a murderer. So, you know what I mean? Like, but yeah, they weren't thinking about that. They were just thinking about, like, this the sinfulness. Like, and these guys weren't that bad of guys. They are just really dumb. Um, like, I, I mean... I'm, who, do, who am I to call them dumb or whatever? But they were, they were, they were giving into the temptations that were presented to them um, to try to go do this. And uh, this is saying, do not do that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that night too, I convinced them not to do it, but I'm not 100 percent sure. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of red flags here, obviously. But you know what I mean. You got to you got to say the stuff, even if it seems like it's simple. You got to say it. You know what I mean. This is this is a good this is a strong start. So, you know what I mean? Like, this is this is the first chapter, and it's telling you, don't do this. So, this is a strong start to, like, really lay down what's to come in the book, that they're going to say right things, things that will be beneficial. But anyway, let's, let's move on. And we will share the loot. My son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths, for their feet rush into evil. They are swift. Now they're making the claim that it is evil. But anyway, yep. Let's just, let's just read before I comment. Sorry. Uh, my son, do not go along with them. Do not set foot on their paths. For their feet rush into evil, they are swift to shed blood. How useless to spread a net where every bird can see it. These men lie in wait for their own blood. They ambush only themselves. Such are the paths of all who go after ill-gotten gain. It takes away the life of those who get it. So essentially, there's a lot said here. But essentially what it's saying is that if you, you reap what you sow, this is like a precursor to the reap what you sow. If you If you... If you conduct yourself in these activities, you open the door for these activities to be done to you. You know what I mean? I'm not, and that's not a, like, and that's not saying that if you don't do these things, these things won't happen to you. But um, they rush into evil. They're swift to shed blood. How useless to spread a net where every bird can see it. Um, you know what I mean? So like the the so for those of you who don't believe in Christianity, I think a good way. I was thinking about this this morning. How can I like convey this to you so it doesn't like um. 
react with your inner being? Like, how do I get past the friction? And a, a working way to just look at this is like a lot of people believe in karma and like Christianity is like giving karma a name. That's a good way to look at it. So you can just swap out, you know, the, the universe, the higher power. You know, we like, I tend to believe in balance because there is some sort of order. And I know there's I'm, I'm walking into a lot of landmines here. I can see it because I've watched so many debate videos anyway. You could say there's a lot like a, there is an order to things and there's a right way and a wrong way or a, like a, if you want to say subjective morality, then there is an um, perceived optimal. Oh, I don't know. Whatever. Um, maybe I'm not as good as this as I thought, but I'll, I'll get there. But yeah. All right. So essentially, this is going to like. Happen. This this is it's making they are making a claim with, without evidence, but. Feel free to go test this. Go go apply this method. Go look at anybody who rushes into evil, who are swift to shed blood, um, who rob people, who ambush people, take stuff to themselves, who are selfish. Any any level of like people who follow this like uh, mantra, this 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 mode of being, and go measure them. Go measure their life. Uh, so. There, this is very testable. This is very easy to prove or disprove. And if you, it won't take you very long to think of somebody. If you've lived any sort of life, it won't take you, it won't, like, especially the age of the internet now. Um, swift to shed blood, rush into evil, ambush people. You could take this literally. This is true literally that people who do this are going to end up in trouble or like, you know, those who live by the sword, die by the sword, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of sayings that like surround this type of thing, but like literally, and then also figuratively or metaphorically or on a smaller level, like people who are swift to shed blood, people who are quick to lash out against other people, maybe not necessarily even to kill or destroy, but just in like to prick, to insult, to demean on all levels from the worst case scenario to the, like the least where people feel like it's okay. Like, let's say, for instance, talking crap on a Call of Duty lobby. If you give in to that enticing behavior, you're going to get a similar result, okay? So it's just like, it's just like, it's a it's a uh, warning to not do this because you will take away the life, okay? And then even also to, like this, let's isolate this. It takes away the life of those who get it. So you could even think of this on level. So there's like killing, maybe, okay, yeah. There's like killing. Lose body function, okay? That will happen to you. If you kill, you are more likely to be killed, okay? So there's that. And then there's also kill someone's reputation. Oh, this is too big of a text. Sorry about that. Let me drink that down to 16. Kill someone's reputation. More likely to lose your own reputation. Because you're, you know what I mean? Like, fighters normally only fight other fighters. They don't fight people who aren't fighting. You know what I mean? So it's like this, this, this is kind of what I'm saying. Like, this applies to the, what they're saying here. Uh, it takes away the life of those who get it. So it takes, may not be your whole life, but maybe it's the, the life of your reputation, the life of your peace, the life of your wealth, the life of your, you know what I mean? It, it's, it, it applies on all levels. But yeah, so that, I think I said enough about that. Let's just move on. Again, I'm I'm probably gonna be really bad at this until I get better. But I'm gonna, if I if I if I really hunker down and do this day to day, I feel like I'll get a lot better. So that's why I'm gonna put myself through it. So then, uh, wisdom's rebuke. The Proverbs does a really good uh, job, I think, of my comment for the title of this part of the chapter. Wisdom's rebuke. It does a really good job of characterizing concepts abstract concepts and making them real to people and making them easily digestible for simpler people people who are, aren't yet there yet who aren't yet trained in abstractions trained in like um like just those different complex thoughts and i'm not just sitting here trying to puff myself up saying i'm a genius or anything like that because like a part of this too is also to humble myself by showing that i am i am just a guy i may have some some things figured out or whatever but i am also going to struggle a lot and i'd like to struggle a lot to show myself vulnerable to you so you don't think that i'm some know it all like I, but i'm going to try my best still anyway but one of the ways i really like the way they talk about wisdom is uh they make it a person because then it's no longer uh really abstract if you think of wisdom as a person whose name is wisdom then you can ease, you can more easily understand what wisdom is. Okay, that's what I'll say about that. So rebuke means um, 
correction, a, uh, a, critis- a critique, feedback, rebuke means stop, hey, a stern warning, stuff like that. Uh, we could just do a quick Google definition real quick too. Express sharp disapproval or criticism of someone because of their behavior or actions. She had rebuked him for drinking too much. Okay, so there's that. Oh, I had Proverbs up. Sorry. Yeah. Out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square. I do also like that they make wisdom a woman because women tend to be wiser than, <laughs> than, than me. <laughs> anyway, out in the open, wisdom calls aloud. She raises her voice in the public square on top of the wall. She cries out. At the city gate, she makes her speech, which is saying that wisdom is begging the simple to listen. Anyway, how long will you who are simple love your simple ways? How long will mockers delight in mockery? So how many? How long will Call of Duty uh, trolls love saying the N-word in Call of Duty lobbies on Xbox Live? Um, and fools hate knowledge. Repent at my rebuke, then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings. So repent at my rebuke. So that means to stop these things up here. I should have scribbled them out out of here. But stop all these things. Don't love being simple. You know what I mean? There's nothing wrong with being simple, but it's it's all, wisdom is also asking you not to love being simple. If you're simple, you're simple. Whatever. We're all simple on our own levels. You know what I mean? Like I'm not a genius. You're not a genius. Even if we're a genius, it's like um, who's the biggest turd? Like it'd be like, Competing of who's the best turd in a toilet as you're all getting flushed. You know what I mean? There's no point. But anyway, the point is to not love being a turd. Okay? How long will mockers delight in mockery? You know, I have this, like, there is a big, long internal struggle between me and my old friend group. And I, I, I attempted to, I, I don't know. I had, like, a lot of, I did a lot of soul searching and felt I needed to leave them behind because at the end of the day, all of, and I've gotten into fights with them and I, I lashed out at them and it was wrong with me or whatever. I know some of the levels, but like I was struggling because they all wanted to just keep making jokes about everything. Nobody could have any conversation. There was no depth to any of our relationships anymore because we played video games. We played Yu-Gi-Oh, but we were not, it was all surface and everything was a joke. Nobody could take anything seriously. So like in the good time, sure. Yeah, it's fun and it feels good, but like, a lot of relationships are worthless to me now because like you can't rely on them when you're in need, like when you're in pain, when you are struggling because jobs suck, you're going like, it feels like you're alone in the world, all this other stuff, because you can't share your pain with people because then you're just full of drama, bro. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. So like I had, I had struggled a lot with uh, friendships and stuff like that because they wanted to stay mocking and mockery and they wanted to stay fools. They celebrated it. So I, I still struggle with that. I don't know quite how to articulate what should be the more correct way or whatever. But because I've gone from like jokes are all bad, jokes are sometimes okay. Da 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 da. I'm still struggling with this, wrestling this myself. But wisdom calls for us to repent at all of this. So not to mock anymore, and not to delight in mockery. Maybe that's maybe that's what it is. Delighting in mockery. Mockers delight in mockery. It's one thing to mock. Maybe, but like to like mocking, that's where sarcasm, the sarcasm, especially sarcasm feels really like you're tricking people and mocking them and you're delighting in it. And you're like, kind of follow yourself about it. You think you're cool because you tear others down and trick them. Um, fools seem to hate knowledge. I don't know about that one specifically, but I, I don't really know too many people who don't like knowledge. Uh, maybe, I guess I don't really know. Like, uh, I don't hang out with a lot of, I, I'd like to imagine I don't hang out with a lot of fools. People kind of make fun of me for like being really curious about a lot of different things and having a lot of things. So I don't know. But yeah, wisdom here is a person and it's just, it's telling you, it's rebuking you. It's telling you, stop doing these things. Bad things are going to happen to you essentially. But I mean, like, it's not saying that now I'm saying that, but then whatever. If you repent at the rebuke, like if you admit that you're stupid, you're simple, um, admit that mocking, you delighted in it and it's wrong, repenting. Repenting means to go back from, admit something's wrong, and then try not to do it anymore. This is another thing where people with Christianity get hung up. They think repenting means you have to like immediately become perfect. But repenting just means admitting it's wrong, being in agreement that it is wrong, and then trying your hardest to fight against it, like more or less. That is a better definition of repenting. Repenting is not like a, uh, a measure of how well you're doing. It is an attempt at doing something. It's an attitude. 
And then um, by repenting at the rebuke, like the warnings from wisdom, then you will, maybe I didn't read this far. Then I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make known to you my teachings, but since you refuse to listen when I call and no one pays attention when I stretch out of my hand, stretch out my hand, since you disregard all my advice and do not accept my rebuke, I, I in turn will laugh when disaster strikes you. I will mock when calamity overtakes you, when calamity overtakes you like a storm, when disaster sweeps over you like a whirlwind, when distress and trouble overwhelm you, then they will call to me, but I will not answer. They will look for me, but will not find me. Since they hated knowledge and do not choose to fear the Lord or fear power. I don't know what you want to say here. Since they would not accept my advice and spurned my rebuke, they will eat the fruit of their ways and be filled with the fruit of their schemes. For the waywardness of the simple will kill them and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will live in safety and be at ease without fear of harm. Um, So, a lot to unpack here. Um, this is the whole uh, "I told you so" thing. Like this is this is where it kind of gets makes me struggle a little bit because it tells us not to mock, but then they go around and do the same thing. Um, but I guess maybe it's also like what I this will happen. I think I think what it's saying is that like if. If you, it's one thing to be a fool and then not know it and then disaster strike you because then you're a victim of circumstance. But if you have the ability to hear and to change and you are shown through circumstance after circumstance after circumstance or through somebody telling you something's going to happen and they have like the experience to back it up, like this is like an abstract like uh, spirit called wisdom but like there's like multiple instances where this can happen to you it's describing a situation that like if a shoe fits then you gotta wear it type thing and it's like um if somebody who knows better is telling you and you you are like willingly refusing to change and say no fuck you i'm gonna do what i'm gonna do i'm gonna do me bro yolo bro then when disaster does come upon you eventually because we live in a very destructive world like we live in a world with, that wants to kill you that wants to eat you alive i'm not talking about humans i'm talking about like the the rainforest i'm talking about piranhas i'm talking about bacteria i'm talking about the entire world is trying to eat humans and humans have been fighting against the entire world for millennium and um if you act like wisdom is telling you, if you act outside, like don't get complacent inside of this safety little bubble that America has created for you. Because if you get complacent in being a fool and not trying to become wise and stuff like that, you'll st you'll take one step out of the safety zone and get shot. It'd be like walking over the dematerialized zone in uh, from South Korea to North Korea and then being like, oh, my God, why am I getting shot? Even though everybody's screaming at you not to do that. Um, that's what wisdom is saying here. And, like, maybe, like, I can feel like it is kind of hypocritical for wisdom to say these things, but it is telling you, because if you think about it, uh, there's maybe situations where you have, should have known better and people make fun of you for um, should having, like, you should have known better or they don't have um, grace for you. They don't have any mercy for you because you should have known better, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I was saying before. Like, if you are a fool and don't have any opportunity, like, say you're, like, five and like you fall off of a, a picnic table or something like that, everybody's going to run to you and try to help you because you have become a victim of circumstance that wasn't necessarily your fault. But if you know better, nobody's going to have any sympathy for you. Nobody's going to help you out. But if you, but if you do turn from your ways and admit, hey, man, oh, man, I screwed up. I've been trying to get over my, you know, whatever, da, da, da. And then people are more often graceful to those types of people. And that's what all this is kind of commenting on. Um. But eventually, if people knocking to try to, like, wake you up, trying to help you, eventually, if you ignore that for long enough, they'll stop trying to help you and then just let you, like, wallow in your own misery or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, certain addicts who, like, will, you know, they try to help them with rehab and they try to help them with housing. They try to help them. You try to help. You try to help. When do you stop helping? You know what I mean? That's what this is all outlining here. So that is the first chapter of Proverbs. And, like, there's a lot of value in it. And, uh, yeah, like I said, this is going to be super rough, super clear. I mean, like, until I've done this a 100 times, I, I can figure out a structure of how to, like, explain things, when to jump in and stuff like that. It's going to be kind of rough. But I hope this was helpful. This is just the first chapter. And it gets, like, 
I'm on like because I'm on my third read, my third read through right now of the entire Bible. I'm I'm hitting Proverbs and I'm about chapter twenty something right now, and it gets better. It gets a lot better and a lot more fun to talk about. Maybe I'll even just like record another episode right now just so I have it ready to upload the next day. Um, but you know, if you made it this far, I think you should subscribe. Obviously, you you, you were um, enthralled by my amazing commentary and interpretations of this, and um, you should probably subscribe if you're um, capable of standing me, because it's only going to get better from here. Anyway, yeah, so everybody, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Hopefully, this is some value to you. Uh, I, this is like, kind of makes my brain hurt a little bit trying to make this... I don't know. This is how I always feel about when I'm reading the Bible and I'm trying to talk about the Bible and stuff like that. I feel like I know what I'm talking about, but I like get after I've done like making an interpretation or something, I feel like I'm only scratching the surface of all the uh, things that are being said um, in every single line, uh, like the, the, the metaphors and all the other different like, you know, I don't know. They're a lot smarter than me, the people who wrote this book. Anyway, yeah. So that being said, see you later. Goodbye. See you in the next video.